Welcome to the King's Table, a podcast out of King's Hill Church in Boston, where we seek to elevate the Bible over opinion, answering the questions you have. I'm your host, Jonathan Mosley. Today we have with us Betsy Bull. She's the founder of Small Enough Ministries and serves as one of the main leaders for the college ministry at Perkinsville Church in Boone, North Carolina. On this episode, we'll be talking about what we're holding when we hold the Bible. An introduction into this glorious book and some suggestions about where to start when reading it. Enjoy. Bessie, it is so great to have you on here. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, I'm so excited. I cannot wait. Uh, this is a, it's a real privilege for our church because I feel like we've been able to steal you multiple times. You've, <laughs> you've, been, a, you've been a speaker uh, at our past women's retreat. You've brought up mission teams to serve with Kings Hill. And now we get the opportunity to have you on the podcast. So I'm excited about, about today. Yeah, I'm really excited. I feel like Kings Hill is like a church away from my home church. Like it's like a home away from home for us. So it's just really fun to partner with y'all today. I'm excited. Yeah. Well, Betsy, tell us a little bit about yourself. I, I love this ministry that you've started, and we're going to be talking about the Bible for sure, but tell us a little bit about Small Enough Ministries. Yeah. So when I was younger, I, um, well, at birth, I was diagnosed with a disability called sacral agenesis, and um, it occurs very rarely. Um, and so um, growing up, I was always the smallest, and even now I'm still like the smallest. And so I always felt like I wasn't pretty enough, normal enough, tall enough, funny enough. Um, I was never enough. And um, right out of college, I think that's why I really love college ministry because during college and right out of college, the Lord just really took a hold of my life and just radically changed me and told me that He is sufficient, that He is enough. And in my smallness, um, I find his sufficiency and that he mm. is faithful and he is good. And that, um, that because I'm small, he is made big in my life. And that there's beauty in the smallness of our humanity to see the greatness of his goodness and the greatness of him as God. And so that's really the cry of my heart for small enough is that we would engage the lost Um, with the bigness and the greatness and the mighty power of our God. And we would equip the laborer, the ones that are working for the church and for uh, the gospel to go forth, that we would do that in small ways that make eternal impacts for our our really great and big and mighty God. I I love that. And uh, something that's just so apparent to me and my wife is when you, when you're able to come to Boston is you do make much of God. You make God look great. And we love when, you're just opening up the word and, and sharing it with us, uh, with our students. When you're praying, and it seems like almost every other word coming out of your mouth is a quote from Jesus Himself. And we're just really, we're just really encouraged by your love for God's word. And that's really why we wanted to have you on this podcast because this passion that you have, we just want it to be uh, spent and spread, you know, for others to to really uh, listen in. And, and so, Betsy, let's let's dive in. Yeah. Something I wanted just to, for us to discuss and chat through is we have this Bible in our hands. Mm-hmm. By God's grace, he's given this book to us. What are we holding when we hold the Bible? You know, I think, first of all, like what I, I take from Psalms, it says, like, this is the comfort in my affliction, for your word has given me life. And the Bible is not just a book. It is alive. Um, it is as scripture says, it's living, it's active, it's sharper than any double-edged sword. It, you know, I think a lot of times we, we sit down to read our Bible and we think, I'm going to read it, but really the Bible, I don't remember who said it, it wasn't me, but it's a famous quote of, the Bible reads us, you know, and that the Bible changes us. And so what you're holding and what I'm holding in my hand when we have the Bible is, is it something that's alive. Um, it's something that, that changes us and transforms us. And I was reading Um, Something that John Piper said, he was talking about how um, that this book makes us more like Christ. And, you know, there's there's nothing else like it. Um, And I think, too, in our society today is we often open the scripture and we point our finger to a section and we read it without really understanding the full story, the full Mm -hmm. counsel, the full understanding of what the Bible is really about. And we make it about us. 
And I think that's a huge misconception and really a problem that we have as far as us as the studiers go. Um, by nature, we as humans want to make things about ourselves. And really the Bible is about God. Um, and it's about his goodness and his grace. And when we learn about God, then we know who we are because we are his highest and greatest creation. And, and so I think just from understanding Genesis to Revelation, the, the creation, right, in Genesis 1 through 3, and then, or 1 and 2, and the fall, right, in Genesis 3, and then the story of redemption that goes throughout Genesis all the way to, to Revelation, and then we see restoration. And, and I think that's what we hold in our hands, is, is the story of our creation, the story of God's creation, the story of our brokenness and our fall, and then God's great mercy to, to restore and to redeem us. I love that. Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking about uh, the Bible as a window as you're sharing this. It, it gives us a glimpse into ultimate reality. It's, it's this one unified story of God working redemptively in history, uh, how a uh, holy God wants a relationship with the sinful people and how God's going to accomplish that. Yes. Uh, I, uh, I love something C.S. Lewis said. He, he said uh, of Christianity, he said, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen, not only because I see it, but because by it, I see everything else. Yeah. And, and just to underline what you're saying, the Bible tells me about, about God, the heart of God, the plans of God, the promises of God, the pleasures of God, the motivations of God. I mean, it's a, it's a book about God. And, yeah. uh, and like, like the sun, it, it starts to shed light then on who I am mm -hmm. and what, what my purpose is and, and the evil I see around me and the evil I know to be in me. And yes. it's just this window into what's ultimate. Mm. Uh, that's it. To be honest, you know, I, I'm waking up in the morning and, and sometimes my heart is a little sluggish, like I, uh, getting, getting, getting my eyes and my heart to this book. And I got to sometimes just remind myself how much I need it. Like, how someone's struggling with that, how would you, how would you speak into that? Well, I think, yeah, a lot of times we, I had a, a dear friend of mine say one time, you don't have to feel it to follow it. Right. And I think we're so emotionally and feeling driven and and I'm a counselor by nature. Like I, I just graduated with my degree in counseling. And so I'm all about feelings, right? Like the joke in my house is if I'm not crying, something is really wrong. You know, like I, I feel <laughs> things deeply, but a lot of times that can get me in trouble. Like if I don't deeply want to get in my Bible, like, oh, it just, I, I make excuses. And I think that is the way of our flesh. You know, a great mm -hmm. theologian said one time, your baptism did not drown your flesh. And so my flesh is always at war because it wants to produce death in me. That's what Galatians says. Like it produces death. And so what, what produces life, but the Bible. And so in the morning I have to pray, Lord, let me love your word. Let me desire your word. May your spirit come alive in me. Like Paul says, I don't do what I want to do, but what I want to do, I don't do. Like who will save me from this wretched man that I am? And so sometimes in the morning when I don't want to get in the Bible, I'm like, oh, right, you better get into it right now immediately. Mm -hmm. um, because that's really the enemy just saying, you don't need it. Like you don't need it. And it, it's just such a lie. And I think too, that's when we turn to people and we begin to have idols in our lives. We begin to see sin take a foothold. I mean, God says in Jeremiah, you have forgotten me. You have, you have turned away from me. You have gone after other gods. And I, I, I say it all the time to my college girls, when you don't want to get in the word, get in the word. I uh, I love what you just said about uh, I don't need to feel it to follow it. Yes. That's such a good a good word. Yeah, I, even my own heart when I'm sluggish to to get into the word in the mornings, mm -hmm. I just have to remind myself about what the word says about the word. Yeah. It's uh, in Psalm one nineteen one oh five. The word is a lamp to my feet. I'm I'm in this kingdom of of darkness. The only way I'm going to be able to get around is if I have this lamp that's out before me that's given me this path of what faithfulness looks like to God or you know about Jesus's words when uh he he says man doesn't live by bread alone but by the words that come from my father and so or uh, Ephesians 6 uh, this this uh armor of God and th the word is like a sword and and if if first Peter if, if he's talking about the devil 
roaring around, prowling around like a lion. Well, the only way I'm going to be able to defeat a lion is if I have a sword. So, <laughs> so I, I'm led by it with being a lamp. I'm, I'm fed by it by being food. I'm defended by it by having this sword. I just, I cannot go a day without God's word. I'm, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a wreck. I'm going to be a mess. I'm going to give into temptation. I need God's word. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think though, Betsy, one of the maybe one of the hindrances for for some of us to open up our bibles is we just don't know like where we're at when we do it's so you know i yeah i could just open up halfway and and all right like here we go just dive in like jumping into a, a swimming pool and feeling the coldness of water hit me but uh but i think it could help too if it, thinking about where would i start if i'm reading the bible mm-hmm. just being able to understand this unified story and, and the table of contents actually is a great, a great guide for that. So if, if I'm turning to the table of contents, I, I'm wanting to dive into this story. Tell me about what I'm seeing in this table of contents as a, as a way to kind of get started. Yeah. So, so I think that's such a good point, Jonathan, because I think often when we disciple people, we just say, read your Bible without really explaining to them what the Bible is, you know, it's like, yeah, go do algebra to a kindergartner who has no idea, you know, even how to read or what the number two is. And so (laughs) I think it's really important to, to start at the basics and explain the beauty of the basics, because when we know the beauty Mm. of the basics, we can build upon that. And, you know, scripture says that there is no foundation, like it's going to crumble. And so yeah, when you open the the table of contents, and sometimes I'll, I'll tell my girls, like, don't be afraid to go to the table of contents if you don't know where Habakkuk is, you know? And so, so anyway, Genesis to Revelation, what we're looking at, right, is the, the Old Testament um, from Genesis to Malachi and then the New Testament from the Gospels to Revelation. And so really the, it's broken up into several sections of um, the prophets and the poems and the writings and um, and the the law right from the beginning and then we have the gospels and and Paul's letters the epistles and and all these things but again I think we get caught up in all of that these sixty six story books are our story about God and about how we have fallen as sinners and how He redeems and restores us and how I always tell people anytime they're opening it. I'm like, start in John. Like if you can start anywhere, start in the book of John and you may totally disagree with me. And I would be so curious as to where you say start. Um, but I always tell my, my girls start in the book of John. Um, because I think John, um, and hear me out in this. I think John is a great bookend. Um, not because it ends right. Revelation is the end, but in the, in the very first chapter of John, it says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and he dwelt among us. And so immediately John, um, the John, the disciple is making a case that Jesus has always been. He is present now and he will always be that at creation, when the spirit is hovering over the waters in Genesis one, when God is, is saying, let there be light. Jesus was the word that brought creation about. And so he is making a case for the Trinity that that this Jesus, who is fully man, was also fully God and is fully God still. And then at the end of John, you see him say, I have written all of these things, you know, in John 20, so that you may believe, so that you may know that this is the Christ. And I think in John 21, he says, but there's so many other things that I could have written that would have filled books upon books upon books, right? But, but these are the things so that you may believe, so that you know he is the Christ. And at the very end of John, he says, I'm, I'm basically, I'm, I'm coming back. And if I desire that, that this disciple stay until I come, I'm coming. And so it's this really powerful gospel bookend that shares the story of Jesus. And along with that, it shares our story too. Yeah, I love that. I, uh, wow, you are killing it right now with the alliterations, the, yeah. the beauty of the basics right? Um, That's such a joke with my college ministry girls. They're like, always the alliteration. <laughs> I, uh, no, I, I love it. I love it because when I'm thinking about the table of contents, for example, mm-hmm. it's, it's really important to know that oftentimes it's, uh, it's not divided up chronologically. It's actually divided up based on genre. 
Yes. And so when I'm looking at Genesis through through Esther, that is really that's a historical narrative. That that's going to tell me basically the 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 story of God in chronological order. But then it's then it's divided up into wisdom poetry, Job mm -hmm. through Song of Solomon, and then you start to really get into the prophets. Mm -hmm. And these prophets are speaking into the, the kings and, and into those that are in exile. And uh, but just knowing how how the table of contents is broken up it helps me understand like where I am in God's story. And then yeah get into the new testament and really there's this um magnifying glass over jesus's life matthew mark luke and john with the gospels and then all right now that i follow jesus how am i going to live out this christian walk and that's going to be through the epistles or through the letters mm -hmm. that different disciples and apostles write and so i think you're spot on and and um i actually would give the same advice that yes. you that you would give uh i would uh I would go through the book of John too. And mm -hmm. I think that you actually, this was a, a big thing that you covered at our women's retreat this past year, but the I am statements of Jesus. Mm -hmm. yes. John, John is where you really get to meet Jesus in his own words. And, and he, he's saying, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. But what I love about, you know, once you read the book of John, uh, then you get to go back to the old Testament and what he says in John starts to have profound meetings. One example would be when Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. Mm -hmm. And, he, and he, he describes himself as the one who came down from heaven. Well, when you read the story of Exodus, God is sustaining and providing food for the Israelites in the wilderness through bread and through manna. And, and so this provision of, of uh, uh, and grace and generosity of God, mm -hmm. Jesus is saying, yeah, but that story is pointing to me. Mm -hmm. So I, I can I can deduce from John when Jesus says I'm the bread of life, Jesus is who I that's who I need for my soul's nourishment. But then it just there's this greater meaning that starts to unfold when I look back over the story. Yeah. Uh, so I, I would definitely I, I would say John too. I would also maybe mention uh, someone gave me a, this advice along the way is that if I'm uh, from from chapter you know, the beginning chapter to the end of a chapter, one book at a time, I would choose John, 100%. But someone also mentioned to me, I thought this was really insightful. He said, well, you know, reading the Bible is like, it, Jesus compares it to a meal, eating it. So if you were sitting down and having a meal at a dinner table with some family, a healthy meal would include vegetables and fruit and meat. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a well-balanced meal. I love that. And so his advice was, okay, well, why don't you, uh, why don't you read maybe a, a proverb a day? That's some wisdom. That's some fruit for you. Uh, dive into the narrative of scripture, the historical narrative, picking a book, Genesis through Esther. That's some vegetables. And then get into some of the meat with the gospels or the epistles. And so just having that well-balanced meal as you're diving into uh, the Bible. Mm. What, do, what do you think about that, Bessie? Oh my gosh, I love that so much. I have never heard that in my whole life. Um, probably because I eat like Sour Patch Kids for lunch. And so, <laughs> um, so I need a well-balanced meal. But I, I love that so much because I think what, I think again, that allows us to see the full narrative, right? About how, um, I heard one time, um, it was a Bible teacher. He said, always look back and look broad, right? So when we read scripture, we want to, like, if we're, if we're in the New Testament, we want to look back, you know? And so even when you were making that, those statements about who he is, that, that I am, I am the good shepherd, right? Well, we know that David was also a shepherd, right? And the only way we know that is if we're studying in, in first and second Samuel. And, and if we read the Psalms, you know, or if we're in Ezekiel and we see that Israel was a terrible shepherd of their people and that, that God says, I will be the good shepherd and, and I will send a good shepherd. And so I think even to seeking out the wisdom of Proverbs of, of just the simplicity and the difficulties of life, like how do we, how do we know how to make decisions? Well, read in the Proverbs, you know, how do we know whom the Lord has called us to marry? Well, read in Song of Solomon about what is love and, and what is God's love for us, you know, or the Psalms, what is, what is the comfort in my affliction? What happens when I'm brokenhearted and God feels distant or I'm in sin, right? Like the mm. Psalms are our lament 
of sin and sorrow. And so I think that's so powerful. And I think, too, again, it drives us to the Old Testament. I, I think a great passion of my heart is the Old Testament. Not that I don't love the New Testament, but but we have lived in this this era of life that we've really cut the Old Testament off. Mm-hmm. And we really need the fullness of it. And I know I keep saying that, but it's just so important for us to understand that. And so I think having the vegetables and the fruit and the, the carbs and all of that, a full balanced meal keeps us full and it keeps mm. us full of God's word so that the enemy doesn't feed us with the things that don't last. Um, and that comes from the Proverbs and the Genesis and the Revelation and, and all of the in between. Yeah, that's good. You know, something that I've really um, admired about you as we've, as you talk about God's word is that you really anchor it in relationship. It's really about knowing who God is. And that's just something I, for those that are listening, that's something I just want to really emphasize. You know, I, I try to, you know, confession, sometimes the, the Bible can be something that's, that's stale and I, I don't want to get to it. And that's, that's nothing about the Bible. That's everything to do with my Hardness of heart, a hundred percent. Like you said, this book is living; it's active. But something that that has helped me has uh, the perspective of this. This is an opportunity for me to get to know Jesus. Yeah. And uh, just like sitting across the table from my wife, having having a cup of coffee, or if I had the opportunity to sit, uh, you know, with with the governor or the president, and it, it's not. It, you know, I, I get to ask questions, I get to listen, I get to observe, I get to watch, and all of this is so that I can know that person, whether it's a wife that I, I deeply love, whether it's um, someone that, a community influencer or someone in politics that I, that I respect, it's an opportunity for me to be drawn into that person. And that's, when I think about the Bible, that's really the invitation. Mm-hmm. We, we get to know who God is through this book. Like I'm sitting across the table from someone I deeply respect, admire, and love. And I had to get a, I get to observe, watch, listen, and just take it in. Mm-hmm. Well, Betsy, uh, thank you for your faithfulness to God's word and, and just uh, thrilled about this ministry that you founded and, and God, God being enough and his word being enough. So yeah, it's a, it's a joy to have you on here today. Thank you for having me. It was awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's discussion around God's Word and where to get started if you want to read it. Glad that you could join us at the King's Table. You can find more information and resources from King's Hill Church at www.kingshillboston.com.